Mystic Post TV. On with Stephen Ryan, publisher, and also Robert Orlando. Robert Orlando is a film producer, documentarian of such works as The Divine Plan, about the Ronald Reagan, Pope John Paul II alliance to break the Soviet Union. And he's also president and director of Nexus Media, whose website is www.dexasmediasite.com. That's just produced, uh, you should know, uh, Citizen Trump, to be available as a digital film release on September 7th on Vimeo, Amazon Prime, and YouTube. Well, Robert, welcome to Mystic Post TV. How are you? Uh, great, and it's, I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. Well, you know, I understand that this was a this was a film project that was kind of born in the midst of the virus pandemic. Tell us about tell us about the film. We understand that uh, it's called Citizen Trump. We understand there's lots of parallels between, uh, of course, the similarly named blockbuster Citizen Kane. What what are the what are the parallels be- between uh, uh, Charles Foster Kane, who was the protagonist persona in Citizen Kane, and and President Donald Trump? I should mention the website. You just mentioned the film, but it's www.citizentrumpfilm.com. Oh, www, really? okay, Thank you. www.citizentrumpfilm.com. But that'll get them to those other platforms like Amazon and Vimeo. So they have a central place to go. So just wanted to get that out there. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> it, it was an incredible experience because, uh, yes, this is a, it's a love letter to Kane and Orson Welles. That was in the, in the soup. Uh, I could not help but confront Donald Trump as a character sketch because he's absorbed all of our airwaves going back to my last two films, which include Patton, General Patton and The the Divine Plan. So I was competing with the sheer white noise of coverage, like him or hate him, white noise of of just being in an environment where one character is sucking everything up like the Wizard of Oz. So I had those two things going. And to tell you the truth, as a New Yorker, and this is a unique experience because now I've really got it out in the world and I'm getting feedback from a very diverse audience. But as a New Yorker, New Yorkers kind of know Donald Trump. We knew him sure. pre-president and then post-president. For, for people who don't live in New York, this is all new to them. And I think going back into his past for them is something completely new for us. It was almost par for the course. So I, we just saw his presidency as like the uh, the climax, if you will, to stay with the, the metaphor of drama, it was the climax of a life that had been lived and planned. And that's why the subtitle of the film is called A One Man Show, because this is not a judgment, but Donald Trump had always wanted to be in media, always wanted to be in the movies. And his whole life tracks back to this attempt to be in the movies and then having to take that passion into different industries. So he basically went into the real estate industry and wanted to be a star in the real estate industry. Uh, he did the same thing when he finally got to the, uh, the casino business. And then he did the same when he was on television with The Apprentice. But his entire early life was a climb in many ways, just like Hearst, who is the character behind Citizen Kane. And, and I just, that, that is too delicious a setup for me not to explore. Wow. <laughs> because both of them knew the power of media very young, both loved to hang around the stars, and both of them made political hay from their media start. Now, there's, they, they do vary at one point, but, and we can go beyond into what other parallels there are if you want, but that's the, that was the starting point and the launch point, the launch point for me. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, without doubt, uh, Donald mm-hmm. Trump, and I think uh, also uh, 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 Hearst himself, uh, or, or in the persona of Charles Foster Kane, they were protagonists, you know, writ large. I just remember from the film, that huge poster behind him in the speech in Madison Square Garden that just, you know, it's just like Trump. It's very Trumpian. Uh, and uh, so it, 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 I do see some, some interesting uh, similarities there. And uh, tell us about the process of, of making this film, coming up with the idea. Well, let me, well, let me keep going there because I wanted to just give sure. you the big introduction on the launch. But I would say let's sure. just go for three absolute parallels. One would be turning media into political power. I mean, Hearst slash Kane is the father of yellow journalism who got, who gained, bought media power and said he wasn't trying to be objective. He was literally trying to find a bully pulpit so he can get the country to go in the direction that he wanted it to politically. That's another whole cast, podcast, if you will. Two is they both were America first. 
They did not believe in the, you know, I, I don't believe in this either, but the foreign entanglements in the case of Trump sure. with China, but in the case of Hearst, it was with Spain. And that's why he, he kind of used that uh, made up story about the, the exploded, the ship, the main that blew up and he sure. tried to blame it on Spain. It turned out to be a boiler broke up on the boat. So using media events to kind of, a lot of times with very salacious details to get the attention of the media. And, and then the third was, found a way to, and I don't think this is false, I think this is them tapping into the times to represent the forgotten people of their time. So even though they had come from affluence, they had figured out a way in their direction, their performance, and, and I can't read their hearts, but probably in their hearts to some degree, were able to capture the imagination of those who felt left behind. Sure, right, right, and so, and, and, which, is, which is absolutely, one of the most powerful things about Trump, he just connects with the ordinary guy and gal on the street, you know, that's working a working stiff <clears throat> that feels forgotten. So, um, so tell he us once about told him. Trump, Trump once told, he called um, Al Sh I know there's probably not gonna be a lot of fans of Al Sharpton, but he, he knew Al Sharpton very well going all the way back in New York. And he once called Al Sharpton after an interview that Al Sharpton did and said to, to the audience, I think it was MSNBC, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. And he said, Donald Trump is an outsider. He's a Queens, Brooklyn boy from, he's on the outside of Manhattan. So to understand that, I'm from Brooklyn and I know the difference between sure. being grown up in Manhattan, Brooklyn or Manhattan. I'm sorry, Brooklyn, Queens or Manhattan. So right. if you're, you're, you're from, you're not quite, yeah, you're still not quite part of, no matter how much power you have, you're still in Queens, you're in Brooklyn, you didn't cross over the river. So if you think of the starting point of his life like that, he has something to prove and he's going to do it there, sets up, I think, a common man parallel. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. did, did you hear also something else that's fascinating about Trump is that I, I heard that supposedly he was quite affected by by Mike Tyson and maybe by Don King. This is the flamboyance, the outrageousness. <laughs> if you're outrageous. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. He, um, he was friends with Trump and, and actually felt for uh, Mike Tyson when he, got, when he went to jail and everything and was a bit supportive publicly. I don't want to go too far with this because this wasn't right. like the field I studied uh, for the film. But I, but I knew that when he went to the casino business, his whole idea was attracting stars to bring back he basically was trying to bring Hollywood and the stars to Atlantic City, which at that point was a dying business. So he was trying to raise that up through his relationships. But yeah, no, he, he connected with all, I mean, he, I let, let's, let's not mince words. Whether Donald Trump, like if you could read his heart or his intentions and no one can, that's subject to be, dis, you know, to be dis debated over his actions and his words that we could talk about. But Donald Trump is a showman entertainer first. Then like he's that. other things. This is undeniable. I don't, I don't know anyone who knows him well and doesn't understand that fact. Now, by the way, absolutely necessary to be successful in the modern media world. Absolutely necessary. He could not have survived that level of attack unless he had the sharpened honed skills of a showman. There is no other way to do it. And again, my subtitle, a one-man show. There is no one like Trump perfect. who could have survived the media. No one. Yeah, he's a show unto no, himself. Even, even, Go ahead, Stephen. Even his worst critics will, will give him credit for that, that he is he is always seemed to be, he's like the, uh, the road runner and the media is like the coyote. He always seems to be one step <laughs> ahead of him. And, well, he told, and, you, you'd see this in the film, you, I hope you see this in the film, is um, I, I talk about Roy Cohn, because Roy Cohn spoke about who was one of his initial mentors who taught him how to deal with lawsuits, but also to keep his name in the lights. He always said, there is no bad media. And I could tell you that from someone like, love me, hate me, but watch my film and talk about it because that's what you want. So what he does is he keeps grabbing the attention back. So if they're not fighting with him, he'll make sure there is a fight because yeah. he's a genius, he's a media genius. And by the way, I, I gotta say to you, like, um, I have, I have viewed this film for all kinds of people. You, I don't like labels generally. I'm a person who just tries to think of the common humanity as a filmmaker. But let, let's, for the sake of labels, get this point across. You have to in this white hot binary world. But I, I have friends who are very on the left who can't stomach Donald Trump. That, you know, who, who even, who even agreed with the points I was making in the film, but might say I didn't go far enough. 
but no one would doubt, I mean, that the game is going from both sides. That this is, this is kind of the food fight we're all being asked to watch. And I jumped right in there. Yeah. yeah. It's absolutely that's true. Exa- yeah, yeah. It really. That's a good, that's a good um, yeah. way to, to depict it. So, so it's, anyway, so this, this idea came up, Robert, during the, yeah. the uh, pandemic and lockdown, sheltering in place. And um, so, so basically, and, and I, it looks like the turnaround time was pretty remarkable. Um, tell me about how it went from uh, uh, an impression to an idea, to like a, a, a concept, and then to, to actually getting script done and, and, and producing this, this film. So yeah, so the, the, for me, the dirty secret about making films has nothing to do with the process of making the film. That if you talk to independent producers who've been lucky enough to survive like we had with the support of other people, the truth is that the film of what we do with the film is about 10% of what we do. 90%, you know, that one film director once said, there's only one plot to all films, get the money so you can make the film. So what, what winds up delaying the process of films being made has nothing to do, for me, if you're, if you're an expert, you know what you're doing, you find subject matter you're passionate about, you know how to structure a story, yes, you need to process it and fine tune it. But for me, this so, so I was sitting in my studio, I'm in Princeton, New Jersey, so the entire town shut down at one point. I'm literally yeah. by myself in a place that's empty and desolate, a little bored and I'm not, lot, not a lot to do. The commercial business shut down. I found out my mom had COVID in her 80s and I'm sitting oh, wow. back and what, what do you do? You start watching the classic films. You start looking at, so I'm gonna play Kane. I know I'm a big fan of Orson Welles. We, that's another show, but, um, but I'm watching it and I said, wow, I never thought of Citizen Kane as a filter by which I could see and use as an investigative tool for Donald Trump. And it was set up wow. something like this. It was set up something like this. So if they have parallel one, two, three, four, five, but we get to see the end of Kane, what does this mean for forecasting Trump's destiny? Do we, could we look at, because Kane is a tragedy. That's point one. Then point two was I just did a little searching online and this is where it was the aha moment. Turns out Donald Trump's favorite film, Citizen Kane. So (laughs) I was done. I was done at that point. That is so easy then to connect the dots because I don't, I don't take that lightly. Now I could, we can get a little deeper on how much does Donald Trump actually understand the film, but it doesn't matter for me at this point because that trip, that trigger there for me meant you have someone choosing a film, which is no casual, when people say that's my favorite film. They may have the top five and they're saying that one at the moment, but when someone has seen something and knows it so intimately, it means they connect with it. So for me, he's connecting with a film that I know cold, I've actually taught it in film school, I know it well. And now this became like, how do I really want to understand Trump? I don't want to come from left, right, and hit the talking points and blah, 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 the same boring stuff. So I wanted to go at it like on a subterranean level, which is what filmmakers do, and find what is his archetype? What's the rise and fall? And what are we looking at in the future? And then leave it open before the election. It's not my job to tell people how to vote. I want to get them really understanding the world we live in right now. Right, right. And, you know, and I, and, you know, the, of course, the film opens up and concludes, I'm talking about Citizen Kane, with a rosebud moment. And the reporter saying, what is this rosebud? What does it mean? <clears throat> and then he finds out, connects to his childhood um, and to an incident with the, the person who was to be his trustee and hitting with a sled and all that. Um, Donald Trump, if we look at that figure, who, is the, who are the, uh, the people that um, most significant in his life I would imagine, by the way, that Donald Trump saw Citizen Kane not once, but several times. Maybe that's, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but, because uh, he seems to repeat himself constantly. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, you know, what was the, what, what, which person in his life can be, can, can kind of be, fulfill that, that uh, emblematic rosebud um, incident what person or what thing is like that for Donald Trump? Who would that be? Or what would it no, be? You're, you're asking, so I, I've, again, these are such like dangerous times with how you use words. I find that if you go into the psychological, then you get, oh, the pop, pop psychology and reducing them as if we're, we are detached from our childhoods, which is impossible. It's an impossible oh, thing yeah. that way. So let me start and cordon that piece off and say, 
And I read Mary Trump's book because I wanted to make sure, um, not that I, I had read probably 30 biographies, maybe 50, including audio books. Again, no, I had nothing else to do, so I was catching up. Wow. And write, I wrote a whole book on him, 35,000 words, which may or may not get published someday. And I hope someone listening wants to publish it. But anyway, and it's a, scra it's a scrap. Book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all, the, it's all the arguments for how I reached the narrative, the points I'm making. I could, because, again, if I'm doing my job as a filmmaker, especially as a, a dying breed, which is an independent thinking person. It's a dying breed. I oh can't tell you. It's the, this is like the, this is my clarion cry for this film from day one and filmmaking today. It's a dying breed in our culture. People are so soft. They're so weak about their points of view. It's, it's almost feeling like if you, whether you're left or right, Marx has won the fight because he's made everything political. Everything, every, every walk of life, family life, culture, film, meat. He's made everything political. He's winning the fight. So it's not a left, you don't win by going on a side. You're actually playing into Marx, but that's, I would love to talk about this for weeks at a time, but, and I have another film coming. Don't ask me about it yet. <laughs> but anyway, so I wanted to go back again. Um, I think Donald Trump himself would probably be concerned that people can use a film like this against him because there's critical distance. But if you think I'm going to live my life saying Donald Trump was not a showman, that there was not a bit of a con going on, oh my like gosh. Showman, that advertising skills and you know hyper highfalutin language and redundancy and the he just and played stick. that game he's played that game forever. But here we go again. He came up against a Clinton machine. It was a machine. There was yes, no absolutely. one but. And you think he's going to be pretty? You think he's not going to be like a, oh my a guns? So this whole no, like you can't be nice. You've got to be a showman. You've got to be a PT Barnum. Totally. Um, with the bugle. With, with the bugle. <laughs> with the bugle. <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah. Going fake news. Fake. I mean, he fought a battle. Um, stood alone in the gap and fought a battle that I. Who beats the Clinton machine and all of the background? I, again, when when Obama was running in what's, what's the year now? Two thousand. Uh, eight, what was the first term? Yeah, first, right. first, uh, so his first time, he had all of Hollywood and, and all of national media down at the White House. He had the entire apparatus of media. Trump didn't have yeah, that. Sure. Trump had a couple of program shows he was starting to do. He did have the run with The Apprentice, which helped him to gain a national name. But I mean, that was it. He took on the entire establishment. And I'm saying to you, that is never going to be pretty. And that's never going to be, I mean, to use the Christian uh, parallel, you know, th there's no Jesus, there's no Messiah doing that. You're getting John the Baptist. You're getting the prophet, you know, the, the guy who eats yeah. locusts in the wood and, the, and, <laughs> and lives in the desert is going to show up to do that. But the, the problem is he may not be the diplomat, right? He may get the yeah, job sure. done and not be the So same with, same with um, the film. In a way, Cain is speaking for the people. And while he does inten intend to use those, he, he bought basically the whole media industry and put them in his pocket. But to do, to do that, he also persuaded a lot of people, but he also could speak for the average person because he felt like he was putting himself between his establishment of the time and his use of money to protect people. And somewhere in the middle of that very complex morality is the world we have today. Absolutely. You know, the thing is, I, you know, what I like about Trump being, I'm a New Yorker too. Okay. And that, and that I'm mean, sorry to hear that. I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, for most say in New York, okay. but my dad was, was lived in Brooklyn and mm, I lived okay. in Queens and the Bronx and okay. Manhattan. And, but, um, but I wanted to say was that um, mm. well, one of the most important things about Trump was that he's able to do so many transformative things on the cheap. For example, his campaign to me, I think was done on the cheap. He, he was, he brought, I mean, look at the, the, the Grand Hyatt hotel in New York city. He basically took the Commodore, which is like a 38-story flea bag, and he just covered it with glass, and it, it fitted much better than before, you know. And 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 down and I've been in the hotel before that Donald Trump, you sure. know, redid, and it's sure. pretty much an old hotel with with nice new carpets, and a paint job. Uh, but he's like that. He's a, he's a he's a magnificent uh, striver, and he does he does things in a big way. He want remember TV City. This 150-story yes, um, yes. complex on yep. the Upper West Side that sure. was going to basically cast an enormous shadow over a city, a town in New Jersey. They said, "Hey, no way," <laughs> you know. But it was so gutsy, man. Compare sure. that to. Hey, Bill, Bill, that's that's a, yeah, that's an interesting point. But let me 
personally, I'm, I'm, I've watched Citizen Kane. It's been a long time. And in the back of my mind, when I'm watching it, I was like, okay, I'm watching the greatest movie ever made. And, you know, you sort of like try, try and look at that movie in that way. And it, I never, you know, not being a film expert or studied film, tell us, it's interesting to me, I think it's going to be interesting to our audience a bit, what makes Citizen Kane the greatest movie of all time, briefly, and then also perhaps how that ties into how you made your movie and why you felt that subject was so important tying it to Donald Trump? That's a great question. So I would say, one, it, it exists in the crossroads of its media crossroads of its time. So what, what, what Kane is doing, Wells slash Wells, is Wells is taking theater and radio and redesigning the way you should watch movies because he's bringing in a different medium to then transform the way you can experience movies, number one. So that's like, I checked that box because I'm dealing with reality TV and then I'm trying to do docudrama style. So I'm making a filmmaker's journey in a documentary, which is normally you do that in dramatic films. But uh, number two, you treat the subject that's again, the Wizard of Oz of your time. Like who is the figure that becomes the filter by which everyone else judges their own lives. So in his case, it was Hearst of the time. So, I, I, and, a, and a media figure, so that ties together twice. And, a media fi- and then I think beyond that, uh, Keynes, uh, Keynes did not do well. Now, again, let, let's get this straight. Hollywood does not produce independent visionary people. Never has, never will. Hollywood is, the, what's the old, the spinning, the Nickelodeon, is spinning at Nickelodeon nickels and dimes and will buy dreams all day long. But Hollywood does not produce independent film visionaries. They had to take on Wells' ideas. And his first idea was Heart of Darkness, by the way, which they rejected, the Joseph Conrad adaptation. Yeah. But they, did, they had to take him on and give him all of that train set and everything because he had peaked and dominated three other industries. He dominated theater, he dominated radio. <laughs> I'm sorry, two other things. He dominated radio with the, the famous stunt he did with the uh, Martians and all that. And then he, in theater, he, he did Black or Orpheus in, in Harlem with, and Caesar in Harlem. He, so he was shattering every medium that was, they had to let him in. And once they let him in for the record and he wanted his independence back, he was gone forever. He never made another film like that in his life. And I, I could go through, he's a whole story in of itself, maybe right. a documentary down the road for me. So, so the parallels were there were like undeniable of being in a transformational moment in time, driven overwhelmingly by media, driven overwhelmingly. It's yeah, fascinating. Sure. So, yeah. uh, the parallels are just, are, yep. are right there between uh, Citizen Kane and, and our, our citizen Donald Trump. It's, it's, really, it's really something else. It's all, and, and, there's, and I would argue that we're, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to ask, I said, you know, I, I want to yeah. get to the film itself. What actually happens without giving too much away? Tell us about the film itself and, and, and a little bit of an idea of the plot line and all that. Um, sure. So, so yeah, the, it's, a fil- right? it's a film, again, it, 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 technically, and you, you'd call it a documentary because there's, I'm the only actor in it. The rest is either it's me and my, I would say it's a, it's like a film that ultimately you would put in the category, like in a video store as a documentary, but I don't think, I think it's something new. I think it's my, film, I think it does. And that's what I'm as an independent thinker. That's what I do a little bit more each time in each film. So in this one, it was a filmmaker's journey where I basically take you into my studio and we do this, investigation. Now, you watch the film with me, you watch what Kane does, you watch what Trump does. You look at, and by the way, and I also unpack how media works. How do you construct triangulation with a villain all the time? So Trump is a genius at this. Like, how do you keep finding a, um, someone that's even worse than you are if you're in a bad situation? And Cohn taught him this, and Roger uh, Stone taught him this later. And so he's also a genius at finding triangulation, which is needed conflict to be interesting. So I break down the analysis. Then I set up the parallels and I show where his life went. And at some point we kind of leave Kane behind because now we know Kane failed as governor and Trump keeps going as president. So you know, and they, they don't match in high office because Trump has gone further um, than, than Kane did. And that's, a, that's an incredible mystery. Like what did he do that, you know, that Kane didn't do? Now let me, let me go back and say, 
Um, Wells got a lot of uh, bad feedback at the time because he sewed it up so neatly in this Freudian rosebud moment at the end that they said that was a cheaping, cheapening out of a very complex subject matter. I won't tell you what I did at the end of this because you have to watch it. But what I, what, I, what I was reluctant to do was to make the same mistake that, that Wells did at the time to give you a simple buttoned up thing so that it's merely entertainment that wraps up and you move on. I, I wanted to leave it more at the audience's doorstep and say, did I or did I not accurately capture the world you've just lived through for a few years? And if I did, what do you think about it? I'm a filmmaker and I'm, I'm probably subjective and I'm not gonna be you know, the authority on what this is, but this has been my real life experience. What do you think? What do you do with this? Forget your politics. Don't be so oh, weak absolutely. and so soft. This is a phenomenon. Forget your this politics, a, yes. You, you just have to look at them and say, oh my gosh, it's like Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> I like, mean, he was a force to reckon with. Yeah. Well, well, someone said it's like watching a, it's like people watch it stop for a car wreck in a way you just can't help That's in right. human nature. You can't stop looking at it, even though you know this is probably something wrong with this. So in a, in a way I'm playing all that human nature that's much deeper than your ideology. And like ideology is to me is a surface cover for who you really are and people hide behind it and the world gets organized behind it because of money and media and I totally get it. And, and I understand now, like think about, let's, let's go a little, look down the road a little bit. So things could coexist, right? So you could have a showman who might align as a patriot with his country. Maybe he doesn't want his country to burn down. So there are, this is like a complex morality play here because when you start burning down police stations and you're burning down the centers of, of culture and cities, and they are, I mean, what do you expect? To sh he might have just, you might have just made him lucky on the third act of his, of his show because if you didn't do that, if you didn't go even further than you went before. Now, here, let me just back up a second. I don't think radical Marxists needed Trump <laughs> to, to, to do what they've been doing for a hundred years. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, no, we don't... But, but Trump was so... But the thing about it is that they, they've met their match in Donald Trump. They've no, met their match. It's true. Man, I'm lose, hey. because everyone always acts like it's a newspaper every day. Like, this is really news. Like, radical infiltration of academia. and media. This has been going on since the 19th century. Like, We've been, like, the culture, and I think it's a thin veneer, and there's a whole bunch of reasons. Like, if anything, Trump, at the best, is, is a symptom of a much deeper corrosion of culture and society that gets compensated for by usually incredibly left-wing jargon, agitprop, and it also gets compensated for by media. So all day long, hiding behind phones and hiding in your life of digital. So there's a fantasy, a bubble we're all living in, and Trump was just playing the, the, the deck he was dealt. He's just playing with the, he couldn't yeah. win that poker game. Trump's presidency, to your point that, you know, academia, all kinds of other groups that were, yeah. you know, sort of had, like you said, a Marxist kind of yeah. background, they never admitted. But Trump has made these people lose their minds and they're just, they're, their hair is on fire and they just, they have to come out against Trump. And so this is, it's an interesting point that you make. That it was always there, but somehow, um, you know, Trump launched the Molotov cocktail into their into their world, and boom, it's really turned into something. Up. But let me ask you something yeah. about. Uh, I want to ask you something about the movie. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, it was, um, and that is um, where um, w w you know the books that have come out about Trump. You know, his sister wrote one that he's mm -hmm. a liar, he's a narcissist, he's this. Mm -hmm. In your movie, I know you've said he's a showman, but what, what, what else are um, uh, folks going to take away that they may learn something about Trump? Like I said, the books say he's a liar, he's a narcissist. Mm. What do people learn about Trump that you think is uh, would be, what people would find interesting? Well, so let, let, me, let me answer by, I'm going to be a little bit more complicated there. Um, narcissists get a lot done in yes. life. George, yeah. I, just, I just finished my book on George Patton, podcast to come. Um, George Patton was an absolute narcissist. Now you could argue one of the best generals in history, but he loved to be in the spotlight. There is no doubt. Don't so politicians going back to Plato suffer from this disease going way. So the idea of dismissing a public figure because they're a showman is just naivete. This is naivete. 
you don't think Barack Obama liked to be in front of people or public organizer? The you think that old he was doing it for the good of the country? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, so that let's dismiss out of hand that showman became a, a, a bad term. It's ne a necessary evil, I think, of a, a free so society. Um, well, even, yeah. yeah, and then the second the second one would be um, ambition is a virtue. Let's let's not forget ambition is a virtue. You might not like how it turns out. So the one thing I did conclude, and this is common for the heroic rise and fall of any great story, the rise and fall of power, which is really the story I'm telling. How does it work and how does the media fuel it? But in my, in my case, it, the problem is that the hero, and in, in this case, Trump is an anti-hero. So he's someone who doesn't, he's not the white knight, even though I think he would like to be. He's not the white knight. So he's got some bad parts to him that make him an anti-hero, but he might be the person who gets a job done. But I think what their flaw is, all of them, is they don't see what their own weakness is. They don't see their own flaw, they're blind to it. And I think in the case of what you just said, I don't think every time Trump talks, he has to throw a Molotov cocktail. He doesn't really, like, no, he doesn't. Sometimes, sometimes, like lower the volume, this is not the show. Whisper this one, delegate, get out of the, off the stage. Like, He's not getting that the thing that God, and this is, by the way, classic, uh, classic story structure of the rise and fall, right? Like at some point, no more stage. You made it. You're here. Start to unify, speak above difference. And a few of those times, I think he could have diffused, and this is the difference between, I don't want to make a complete comparison, you know, Reagan pivoted. So Reagan got the racist, the inner city guy, the rid living for the rich. He got the same talking points. But he pivoted because he didn't bite when they when they they threw the molotov. He didn't throw the molotov. He he you know right. stepped out of the room gracefully or fired back. And and he says, look, that's not what I'm about. I'm not a party now. I'm the president. Um, different styles, but that I think will be ultimately. And and again, when you get into sensitivity like disease, communicating disease and boundaries, and you also get into race, like again, some people are marching because they really believe this is the way they could symbolically represent. Fairness. It's not everyone is a is a is a black you know what do you call it? like a radical Marxist and Tifa person. I'm sure. I'm sure it's always a mix of things. But by doing that, you're right. He assures himself a very clear base, and he defines himself better by being anti something evil, and that that's the classic thing. But I would argue in the end, if he wins or loses, that his flaw will do it one way or the other. Sure. I mean, I think I think he's learning to to calm down a little bit and not to be so hyper partisan or tendentious or, you know, just, you know, hard, hard smashing and ridiculing and character, making caricatures of everybody. He's able to do that, but he, it would have helped him if he had done it more. But then again, if he hadn't done it, would he be no. in the white house to, 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 to contemplate that need to, to soften things? But that, that's why we call, go, let me go back to what, to what um, we were talking about earlier. The reason why Citizen Kane is a tragedy, and that's why we don't, by the way, we don't do tragedy, just like you guys know. Tragedy is a very specific, we dropped that one for escapism and other things years ago. And, and you will find films that have tragic elements in them, but we don't make tragedies. But if you look at Kane, the tragedy is what you just said. How could someone, so, they, they say this, I don't know if you guys remember Touch of Evil. But it was the same thing in Touch of Evil at the end. Do you guys know Touch of Evil? I've heard, the, I don't think I've, seen the movie. I've heard of it. I've, okay, I've, okay. But anyway, it's like, well, how, do you, how do you summarize a man's life? Is it, is it so simple as to say he was a perfect, pre like who's perfect and who's, so it's kind of like a tragedy is a way of looking at, that's a difficult, um, the tragic view, the tragic sense, it's hard to embrace. Because you've got to be strong. You've got to be strong in yourself. You have to be mature. You have to have a healthy culture. Because complexity requires like a unity beyond part partisan politics, beyond religious wars, beyond this. Like you have to have people like a, a family, like a human family that gets like, what, think of, just set up, set up this conversation that we talk about with politics in another arena. So if you didn't ever talk to anyone you disagreed with, you'd probably limit your <laughs> your base down to 30%. You know? And some people exactly. might want to do that, but that's not the way film is. Film is trying to reach out for the universal to the most people. So I think in the end, it's the, the tragedy could be, could the things, the gifts that got him to go from Queens to the presidency, which is amazing, and defeat Clinton's machine, 
Could those things be the very undoing because he can't stop the sale? He can't stop the pitch. And I, if I was in the room, I, I don't want to speak like I have the right to say this, but as a humble filmmaker, I would just say, my goodness, like say the piece and then delegate and like get off, just take it down 30% and you would be like, and, and he doesn't, he doesn't. Right, there's yeah, absolutely. a, just to put a, mm-hmm. you know, a, one final thought on, on yeah. that. The comedian, the, you know, like whether it's Jerry Seinfeld, there's a, they know when to get off the stage, right? And he does, and, 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 mm-hmm. and Donald Trump, seems to be just when he has him right where he wants him, he bombs. It's just something. But, figure well, 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 but it's interesting because that's the undermining. This is like that. If you want to go a little deep psychologically, like why undermine yourself? Yeah. If, you, if you can go from 35% and I'm, I'm making this up and you can go to 60 or 70%, why keep pulling that card out? It's, this is the complexity of human nature, right? The corruptibility of all of us. Like, we go to the things we're familiar with because they, that's what got us to the party. And when yeah. you're successful, it's hard to take information from the outside because you're like, no, who's sure. gonna, you have no peers. Who's going to tell him? How many people could come to him? And go, you know, like yourself, I was a media character and I wound up being president. <laughs> so no one could say to him, this is why he's so fascinating. And that's why it's not a judgment. But I do think that a study of Trump through the filter of film and Kane is a way of looking at the American experience and evaluating, like, where are we today? What does this mean for us that we are upset, that everyone's looking into a phone when you meet them, and we're living every day following this left-right, media-divided craziness, where on one side they're burning the streets, and the other person ideological. Like, there's, it's just, what does this all mean? This is all, to me, symptoms, is the body dead? You know, does the body need, like, a, a, an electric shock? Is there a turning back or a turning forward? Like, but the body is sick, if nothing else. And it's, it's living. Well, with, yeah. The body also, let me tell you something. The, yeah. the, the body politic in the United States, the body politic in the United States, I think, thrives on the unexpected and surprises. And we, because you, we see that with Barack Obama. Who, who would have thought that a black guy would have become president, even though he's a mulatto? Mm-hmm. I mean, what? it was pretty stunning. It Edit was pretty that out. stunning. Huh? No novelty. No novelty. No, you're making so. So I would say what you described is. Um, I, I did. I don't want to. I don't want to go too much into philosophy. If you have me back, maybe we can go deeper than this. Right. But the philosophy I've read, the media philosophers, for going back to the phenomenon of CNN and the Iraq War. But they a lot of, in particular, I won't say his name right. It's something like Baudrillard. But he and a lot of others analyzed that at some point media reflects reality. Right, so if you if you wrote a, you lived in a small town and you wrote a novel or a short story about the small town, it, but at a certain point, media repeats media, repeats media, and they call this the hyper real. So it gets to the point where merely the presence of saying something on media is really truth. So that's why lies don't. That's why where fake news comes in and lies. This is Europe. This is this is pre World War II. I hate to say that, but this is pre World War II when there is no point to check it in the larger bo- body like agreed constitution this, we have enough beliefs in our values. Well, you don't have a reference point, then it's the merely stating of something over and over again. And what that is, is hyper stimulation. So to your point, then the only thing that satisfies is novelty. So it's gotta be dramatic change and it has to be burning down a street, not, not you know, burning down, a, you gotta take it the next notch because to satisfy the stimulation level, you gotta keep going. And this, yeah, is, this sure. is all like, this is the body. We, this is like, you know, but tell us, doctor. It's a, little bit more, it, it, yeah. a little bit more than just, just being, you know, a jaded uh, consuming <clears throat> public of media. Uh, there's also the fact that Americans love rakes to riches. They love the idea of somebody, a nobody becoming a huge somebody. They sure. identify with that tremendously. And I think Trump taps into that because they, they, the, the ordinary guy sees all these things happening with Bill Gates and, and Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, all these like hugely powerful men, filthy rich, and mm. the globalism. They feel like they've been, they, now, you know, the guy who was, had a job that was a really good job that gave him a middle class life, and then his sons and daughters have to get jobs at Walmart. And, you know, the neighbor's kid died of a heroin overdose, you know, and they don't like globalism. They're fed up with it. And they're being mm. told by the elites that, hey, this is your breakfast tomorrow. It's globalism. Get used to it and adapt. That coal mine is getting shut down. Deal with it. We're mm-hmm. fed up with that. And I think yeah. that Trump is somebody who said, you know something? 
I'm turning the tables. I'm sorry. They, what, they hate him so much because he disrupted. Sure. He did the unexpected. He ruined the plan. Sure. He, no, he, he is a disruptor. There's no, again, I'm, I'm in the neutral sense. I'm in awe of that level of breakthrough. Like that, that's why I'm saying it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to happen without a mess. The question is, when do you, when does it trail off? But I, but as for going back again to how he did it, it's just incredible because you're right. And, and a, like a lot of good people, I even heard once about Michael Jordan he would like take an insult from someone sitting during practice just to motivate himself. He wanted to show someone wrong, to prove that person wrong. So the worst thing they keep doing is keep attacking him, keep feeding him, keep, they just, they're setting up to go, oh yeah, you want me to do that again? Watch me, I'll do that again. So, and he's set to do that, yeah. He takes the cheese every time, but he's pretty good at eating it. I'm sure. not getting, not getting sure. back, but I, listening to you, I can't wait to see it, I, I really mm -hmm. mean that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but I, you know, we want, we don't want to keep this too long. Mm -hmm. And um, so give us a, uh, you know, a, a, a last few words on, you know, why people should, uh, you know, spend some time with the movie. I, I can't wait to see it. I'll be honest with you. Cause the and, things, and, wh and where and they can get one more it again. Thing. One thing I've learned about Robert Orlando is that, um, and I'm sure everybody who speaks with him says the same thing. We could go on for three hours. We can talk the rest of the afternoon, maybe get a cold beer, but we can't do that right now. So thank you again, but let us, tell us why, uh, again, um, why we should go see this movie and why. Uh, well, let me, let me, let me give you the, the, the www.citizentrumpfilm.com, www.citizentrumpfilm.com. Um, the, re the reason why you should say it, I, and I hope my interview reflected this in the balance of sentiment here is that trying to just be the filmmaker with an independent vision in a white hot political environment, I think it could be a tool for reflection, some inspiration, I hope. I mean, I'm still an entertainer and, and I do it in a way that's highly stylistic to kind of give you the homage to the, the snow globes and all those things. So you will yeah. have fun with it. You'll have fun with it. But I would just say like, you know, shut up and watch it. You know, like, shut, don't bring your party affiliations and all your insecurity. Just watch the damn thing and come away with your own ideas. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a right or wrong conversation in an audience. If you hate it, I might kind of like that. If you love it, I kind of like, I kind of like in between. It, like, I don't go wrong by people seeing it. I just think what people will do if they don't hear these types of conversations is they'll prejudge it. They'll prejudge, they won't, they'll, that's the safety of a weaker audience is they'll, they'll prejudge and put it in a box because it's too difficult and, they, and it, life's too easy now because, you know, Trump is Hitler and, and, and the Marxists are in the streets and, and that's it, conversation's over. Pick a team. Well, one last thing. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. As you, as you, let me just say something real quick, yeah. Bill. Um, as you're, as you're talk, as you're saying that, I'm thinking I have a, one of my best friends is the most um, anti-Trump person I know. I'm, I, I'm not that way. But to me, I'm going to do all I can to get him in a room, me in a room, maybe a couple of other friends, and make them watch this movie. Because I do believe that you're bringing an object, you're bringing a, 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 an aspect to Trump that uh, I think both sides will learn something from and both sides will find interesting. So I, that's what I'm going to see if I can pull that off is get some of my anti-Trump friends in a room together and watch the film. If you get enough people, you could beam me in if you want, and I'll be the Q and A guy. I mean, we actually are offering oh, that'd be that. Awesome. If you guys, if you guys could set it up, it's just like no bandwidth right now, and I have a book coming out on top of it. But the and I also have that other the publishing book of the Trump book. But if you guys want to set up uh, like a digital event, and you'd like oh, me yeah. to step in as a Q and A and do what we're doing now, and oh, awesome. I, I think it's a conversation that must happen, but it, it's not quick. It's not a soundbite film. It's not a soundbite conversation as much as we have to boil it down to its essentials but yeah. you guys want to do something like that and, and we oh, offer absolutely. it we offer it but if you guys yeah, want to do the if you want to run the operation let me know where i could show up if i have the time i'll do it great well good well robert Maybe orlando listen think go ahead steve i'm sorry no no i said let's think about that and we'll figure something out yeah. okay again www wait wait www.citizentrumpfilm.com I want to get that out there. All right, no. Well, well, can they, 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 well, can well, they just, what happened? Can they Google ahead, Citizen ahead, Trump uh, 
Movie. It's there's there's a lot of I what I learned after I made the film or somewhere along the making of the film. There's so many commentators yeah. who have written articles on this that I was unaware of that. Like I'm not the first person to think of this. It impacted me when I watched it. But there are a lot of people who see who know film. See here, here's here's the challenge. The people who know this subject matter the best are probably not the loudest in a political environment. It's a little bit you know you get what I'm saying in a, in a political environment. Um, discourse narrows down to very simple language and simple idea. It's really a war-like uh, footing. But something like this takes, again, back off a notch, like 20 30%, and get into maybe what's common, what could you argue for, what's a product of the media, what's a product of us, what can we control, what can we control. And I think that takes more of a discourse, like an open conversation, because if it's just, what was that director up for? What was he not up to? Like, it, the conversation's over. I mean, so yeah, if you, so I would say that's my... My hope is that some people will start taking it on board in the way I just described it. And then if they want to use it as a tool for their point of view or not, my job's done. I'm moving on. Sure. Well, listen, Robert Orlando, thanks for being on Mystic Post TV. Folks, you got to go see Citizen Trump. It's going to be available on Amazon Prime. It's going to be on Vimeo, YouTube. Uh, and what is the default title of the movie again, please, Robert? It's Citizen Trump, a one-man show. Citizen Trump, a one-man show, a must-see. Thank you again for being on Mystic Post TV. Thank you, guys. I, really, I, I look forward to hearing from you after you see the movie. Yep. Hey, absolutely. Talk to you, Robert. All right, take care. See you. Thanks so much.